Adelaide. This is my 1961 Mercedes 220 SB. So yeah, Finny is their nickname. Basically all original. I was going to paint the car when I got it, but as you can see, it's quite patinaed. And uh, I've decided, you know, just to leave it. And uh, it's only like that once. So if I paint it, it's never going to be like that ever again. And it gives it more of a feel and a lot more character. Yeah, it's just, it's a cool car. As I said, it's complete. It's pretty much completely stock. It's got airbags in the rear. As you can see, it's pretty low. And other than that, I've just sort of added the, the luggage rack to the roof as a, you know, homage to the old family holiday, basically. And yeah, just something different and gets a lot, you know, fair bit of attention actually. So, so yeah, I just love the original, keeping it all original and old and, and not sort of molested. I have a bad, bad addiction to uh, chrome bumper cars and old cars. I grew up playing with uh, Mazdas. So I started off with early Mazda 1300s and stuff like that. And I uh, built myself an RX2 Coupe, which was a bit of an iconic car in Adelaide scene, a black RX2 Coupe with RE plates. I had that for many years and sold that and then uh, moved on to, actually was lucky enough to build one of my dream cars in an early 911. And uh, I've always loved old cars and a good friend of mine uh, Troy Barker great car photographer in Adelaide very well known in the scene he uh, mentioned that he had this and I uh, went to see it and fell in love with it instantly and just had to have it so pestered him for a while and uh, finally got the car so it's a dead stock car all the interior is dead stand everything's absolutely 100% original which is fantastic and I love I love to find an old car that hasn't been molested obviously it's got the airbags but it, you know you can't actually visually see all that sort of stuff and, until you're underneath it but yeah so suddenly and visually it's all 100% stock which uh, I love and you don't see very often these days everything's being chopped or cut and, and painted or whatnot so yeah it's nice to have a bit of a survivor car once you're a car nut you're always a car nut whether it be you know something slow and you know i love to cruise and stuff like that and i don't need to go fast these days so but also have been uh, finally got to compete in classic adelaide which is a, a bit of a bucket list item for me so me and my friend Joel Mullins uh, entered in his EV9 last year and yeah, had an absolute blast. So that's where I get my uh, speed thrills from these days. And other than that, I've got a couple of old Mercedes, which I just love to jump in and cruise along the beach or up in the hills or whatnot. It is, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit boaty, but it's a cruiser. So that sort of adds to the whole drama of driving an old car. And, and you know, it, it's just, it's a fun car to drive and I like it. It feels like a big old lounge chair, to be honest. But when you're cruising around it, you know, it's great and comfortable. And I, just, I can throw, throw my mates in the back and, and just really enjoy it. It's a bit of a social car, really, with me, between me and my friend so yeah it's a, it's a fun car to, to cruise around in and everyone appreciates it yeah like the whole car scene stuff as in the shows and stuff I, I just and the cruises I try and stay away from um, I'm really loving sort of the cars and coffee stuff these days where you know a lot of like-minded people coming not to you know just to show off what they've got and uh, you see you know in my years of car cruises and whatnot seen a lot of accidents and stuff and people just being silly so I have stayed away from those sort of events but it's it's really nice now being a little bit older now also um, a lot of these really cool events for like enthusiasts and stuff like that with the cars and coffee popping up all over Adelaide now which is great and I really enjoy getting along to these things it's, it's a nice way to start the day on a weekend and, and talk to like-minded people and see what they've got and created in their sheds and stuff you know you always toy with you know engine swaps and stuff like that and painting it and having it shiny because I'm, I'm a lover of all my cars are black and I really I really struggled when I got this car with it being patinaed and not perfect so as I said I was I originally had plans to paint it but it really grew on me and you know it's just every time I go out and look at it in the shed it's one of those cars that puts a smile on my face so yeah no no inspiration really I just think in this day and age you don't see many survivors and so I think it's kind of cool not to have something that's perfect and being like that I can enjoy it more going from a Porsche which was a big dollar car and an immaculate and you know you, you become scared to drive it you don't want to drive it you can't park it anywhere you're scared someone's going to scratch it whereas this being patinaed and, and all original and what not. As I said, I can enjoy it with my friends and chuck them in there and go down the beach, go to the pub, have a beer and just enjoy it. And I'm not worried and worried to drive it or park it anyway. So it's a nice feeling to actually enjoy a car, get in it and feel comfortable instead of being worried or nervous of what's going to happen. Yeah, if the weather's good and yeah, it's just nice. As I said, it's just one of those cars that if I'm having a bad day, I can go out and look out and smile and I jump in. It's just an actual, it's a joy to drive and see people's faces when they see it. And because they're obviously a pretty rare car, you don't really see many of them. Yeah, it's a kind of a rewarding car in a way because it's funny, you know, the, the reactions it gets from, you know, your kids that are three, three years old, five years old, right through to your grandparents and stuff that see it, they haven't seen one since you know, back in, in the early 60s. So yeah, it's, it's a car that appeals to such a broad range of people, which is just, yeah, it's a really cool thing actually. So they've got, this has got a 2.2 straight six uh, twin carb. So yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty bulletproof engine actually. Had a lot of trouble with the carbies back in the day and the Zenith carbies are quite uh, complicated. But yeah, it's, with any old carby car, it can be a bit of a pain to start sometimes and things like that. But once it's going, it, you know, it just chugs along. It's a smooth car, it's just such a great cruiser as well. 
obviously not out to set any land speed records with it. It's a purely a cruiser for me. So yeah, barely, you know, rarely sees over 60. It's fine, as I said, my days on the on the roads of, you know, going fast and whatnot are, are done. As you know, it's pretty hard to do these days. There's no need for it. I can go to the track now and I just thoroughly enjoy jumping in something and, and literally just cruising around. I've talked to, to a lot of people about that actually. And, you know, cause they said I was crazy when I sold my Porsche, but to be truthfully honest, like my Porsche was an absolute dream car to build. And, you know, it's one of these things that when you're a kid, you have a poster on your wall and whatnot. So even have one in my shed and to build a car of my dreams was accomplishment and a dream. But at the end of the day, I've thoroughly just felt like I've fallen in love with this car. I absolutely love it. And as I said before, it's one of those cars where I can jump in it and drive and enjoy it and not be worried about it. Whereas in my Porsche, I was, you know, whenever you're driving, you're on edge and you don't want to break something because it's expensive to fix and, and things like that. So at the end of the day, when the Porsche is a dream car of mine to have, but this I've just, you know, I've totally fallen in love when it's one of the only cars that I've ever had that, you know, it puts a smile on my face just looking at it and everyone else and, it, you know, just driving it. The big old steering wheel, no seat belts. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's just a fun car. It's just really comfortable. As I said like before, it's like a big lounge chair. I'd definitely say I'd probably favor this over my Porsche, as silly as that sounds, and people would say I'm silly, but it's, it, brings a lot of enjoyment which is cool one thing also that <laughs> it doesn't i don't miss it too much i actually worked with porsches so i'm lucky enough to get my porsche fixed on the daily so that made selling it a little easier to have this and own this is, is fantastic and i do get my porsche fixed and work which i'm very lucky to get to play and drive some amazing cars and rare cars so yeah i, I definitely have a massive love for porsche still and i just i don't own one but i'm a, yeah as i said lucky enough to get to sit in and play with them and drive them on the daily, so. I work at uh, RSR Sports Cars, um, basically a Porsche specialist. Uh, we specialize in anything old Porsche, so we basically, almost a one-stop shop now, predominantly working on early 911s, 356s and stuff like that. So yeah, we get a lot of rare cars through, you know, people sending cars, and we got a full body shop and stuff now, so lots of restoration on the go, a lot of, yeah, and even just at any one time, we'll have 5911s in at work, and you're like, where are these cars? You, know, you never see them on the road. It is a, a lot of people's dream jobs, and yeah, if you're into cars and stuff like that, even people that come through the workshop and have a look they're just blown away by what we have there so yeah i'm very lucky and get to see some very cool stuff we looked after a lot of race cars and stuff like that back in the day as well so yeah i've got get to experience you know a lot of the classic stuff race car stuff which is cool as i said most people think i'm crazy for sort of favoring this car over my 911 but yeah, it was just one of those times where money was great as well because the value of the air cooled Porsches had gone through the roof worldwide. It's one of those things, hard decision, but at the end of the day, I wasn't left with nothing. I still had this little thing in the sheds. As I said, it brings a lot of joy and happiness. And yeah, it's just one of those cars that, that makes me smile and, and appeals to a lot of people, which is cool. So since I had it, also, yeah, as I said earlier, it's just one of these cars that appeals to such a wide variety of people. And, you know, you can pull up behind a you know, half a million dollar Ferrari or, or something like that. And, you know, it's happened before and, you, <laughs> and people just flock around it. Like you, you you rock up and belly it out, drop it on the bags and people are like, what the hell? So it's cool. Like, you know, they're, they're not a super valuable car. They're rare, but then, you know, they're going up in prices. Most old stuff is now at the moment, but money, you know, people, someone could offer me a lot of money for it. I don't think I'd take it because I just thoroughly love the car. So it's, it's just fun seeing the looks on a lot of people's faces and the happiness and joy that it actually brings to other people as well that see it. So. Yeah, it's cool. It's a, it's a rewarding car and fun car to... Yeah, a lot of things, you know, these days, a lot of cars are, are definitely hidden um, and shed, hidden in the shed and done not a lot of work. But I think also recently in the last couple of years with the classic Reggio and stuff like that, we've seen a massive resurgence in, in people getting their cars out of the sheds because, you know, it's, it's cheaper to register and you can have your car registered for a year or two years at a time. So I think that's been great for the, the classic car community and culture in, in Adelaide as well that that's possible and you're not spending, if you want to drive your car on a nice day, you don't have to spend $300 to register it for a day to drive it. So I know it's possible to keep a couple of cars now myself and it, you know, you can have them registered. It makes it, makes it worthwhile now that you can have them registered and ready to go. So you're not paying stupid amounts of money to keep a few cars that you might drive once or twice a year sort of thing. So one thing, aspect I love about, I love the interior of the car. I love the, the big old steering wheels. That's just something you get in and it feels like you're driving a massive boat, but just the old ivory steering wheel typifies old too, and the dash in them is amazing as well. I think, I don't know, I just, I love the body lines on them. To be honest, I, I, it's got such a classic shape and the, and the bumpers, I love the bumpers on this thing as well. The double bumpers on the front, just big chrome bumpers. And so it's, hard, it's one of those things, it's hard. There's so many aspects I think that, that come together to make a car and you know these older cars there's so many different elements and and angles and and stuff that brings them all together and makes them a classic car of, of what they are so yeah that's a that's a tough one it, i could go through the whole car and list off different things and aspects and angles that i love about it but yeah probably one thing i think most people see as well is when they get in is the steering wheel everyone always comments on the steering wheel so which is silly that might sound silly but yeah it's 
there's nothing like, no one sees big old strings like that anymore. And yeah, the horn and stuff, it's just classic, so.